Children's Mercy Critical Care Transport is the only 24-hour-a-day, seven-day-a-week transport program in the region dedicated exclusively to neonates, children, and adolescents. Up to 10 teams a day are dispatched immediately from bases at Children's Mercy in Kansas City, Missouri and Children's Mercy, Kansas. All transport teams respond by dedicated ground ambulance, rotor wing, turboprop, and jet airplanes. The transport program has been designed to bridge the gap between Children's Mercy and other medical facilities in the region. Every day is different and it is really exciting. I really do enjoy my role here. My name is Janae Chapman and I am a communication specialist at Children's Mercy Kansas City. As a communication specialist, I dispatch our crews to outside facilities to bring patients back to Children's Mercy. I also flight follow if we have air transports. And I also do direct admissions onto the floor and we also provide our local providers with consults with our specialty providers. In simple terms, flight following is basically how we watch our aircrafts that are heading to outside facilities, as well as getting to our facility safely. The skills that I needed was a care assistant, and I had been a care assistant for four years, and then I obtained my communications flight certificate. The communication flight certificate is the certificate that we need to be able to flight follow for our air transports. The reason why having a care assistant license or an EMT license is important is because of the medical terminology aspect. If we get a call that comes in that's about an appendicitis, then I know that a surgeon needs to be connected with that provider to decide if that patient needs surgery or not. Coming in as a communication specialist, I actually didn't even know that's what I wanted to do. I kind of read the job description and I was like, hmm, seems really interesting. But once I started working as a communication specialist, I realized I really do love this position that I'm in. Emergency medical technicians traditionally work on ambulances. I help make sure that the team gets safely to where we need to go. And I start the day by coming in and making sure the ambulance is ready to go and in proper working condition and has everything that it needs to make sure we can go get patients and get them back here. My name is Jeff Drew. I'm an EMT emergency medical technician at Children's Mercy. I've been here 23 years, just a little over actually. So to become an EMT, the, one of the first things you need to do is complete your high school education or get the equivalent thereof. It's about a semester course to become a, just a basic EMT. If you want to go on and become a paramedic, which many people do, it takes a couple of years to complete that. For children's, you can come start as an EMT and then get some of the education assistance that they offer and go on and further your education and you don't have to pay as much. The team atmosphere at Children's Mercy is pretty nice. We have a big family. Even when we don't see each other for a long time, even though we're on there on the same day, we're still laughing and joking and having as much fun as we can. I'm kind of a person that I don't like to do the same thing twice the same way. And if so, if that's how you're built and all that, then this is a good line of work for you. Kids get sick fast, but they get better fast. We can go in to a, a critically ill patient, do very few things, but these are things that we're used to doing and that we can see an incredible turnaround. Kids are up and talking and wanting to watch a movie and wanting to play with a toy that we brought them. And just seeing them go from laying there, not interested in anything, to waking up and wanting to play with a toy or watch a movie is just incredible. My name is Alan Smith. I'm a transport respiratory therapist on the critical care transport team. On the day-to-day, -day, what we take for granted of being able to just take a normal breath for so many is so difficult. We can reach so many people and help them with that. When we get to a facility, the nurse, the respiratory therapist, and the EMT will all enter the room. We all lay eyes on the patient to make sure, is this patient sick or not sick? At that point, the nurse will step out and get report. Me, as a respiratory therapist, I will go ahead and begin my assessment. I try to get history from the family. I ask my sample questions, so signs and symptoms, allergies, medications, last meal, prior events, things like that to try to figure out what's going on. I look at my job as I'm going in to find a problem. Even though I'm dispatched with the diagnosis, I go in and try to find an issue. And a lot of times I find issues that were not addressed prior to us arriving. 
Once I've done my assessment, I completed my history and my conversation with the parents, then I will meet back up with the nurse and we will come up with a plan. And between the three of us, we'll execute that plan. To be able to take someone who is having a hard time breathing and help them and see them change almost immediately is incredible. I have worked for Children's Mercy for 17 years, and this is the only place that I have ever worked that has people that have been here for so long and is so supported by the leadership of this hospital. What I love most about being with the Children's Mercy team is that it is always super dynamic. I love the challenge of not knowing where you're gonna be or what type of case you're going to go on. You get to really make a big impact on somebody else's life. My name is Christine Janda. I am a registered nurse here at Children's Mercy and I've been here for about seven years. Essentially, I am the leader of our group. The registered nurse is the one that communicates mainly with the referring facilities. We get reports and we speak a lot to physicians, especially the ones here at Children's Mercy. We are essentially their eyes and their ears. I worked about five years in the ICU and that's really good to have a good foundation of critical care experience because as transport, you're out there kind of on your own. So you really need to know your ins and outs. Compared to being on the floor as a nurse and being on transport, you have a lot more resources at your beck and call on the floor. You have more staff members that are around with you. You have physicians that are right there on your side. But on transports, it's you, your respiratory therapist, and your EMT. And it's just the three of us working together to fix a problem. There's lots of differences when we go by ambulance or by helicopter or by plane. First off, when we go by plane, we have to go to the downtown airport. From there, we load all of our equipment into the plane and our personal space gets smaller and smaller. We know when we go for a flight that is typically a long distance, as opposed to if we are on a ambulance transport going within the Kansas City Metro. One of the most rewarding and meaningful pieces of my job is knowing that regardless of how terrible of a day it is for that family, I know that I contributed to their child getting better. When you drop them off over here at Children's Mercy and they give you a big hug and they just thank you. You know that they felt like somebody was there for them at the time that they really needed it and that you were there to help provide that comfort and support for them. Other transport teams are calling us asking for information, wanting to know how we do things we have the best transport team in the country. I didn't know that I wanted to be a communication specialist, but when I started the job, it's just unlike anything I've ever done before. And I truly do wish that I would have made the decision sooner. I run into so many people that say, oh, I, don't, I couldn't do that job. I always say, here's the thing is that most of the time, from the time we pick up a patient to the time we drop them off, there's a huge difference come for a ride along and see how fun it is to have something that is not very standard or traditional on the floor. Are you looking for a job that comes with adventure, with excitement, with a little bit of pressure, but the drive to learn, to be the best, to provide the best care, to travel to different places, see different things? You come to work, you never know where you're gonna go. So if you're looking for a job that just demands the best, this is it. Four, three. What a great look inside the world of critical transport. Now we're zooming in live from Children's Mercy, Heather Scruton, Assistant Director of Critical Care Transport and Angie Richardson, Talent Acquisition Program Director. 
Heather and Angie, if you can go ahead and unmute your sound and your video, and we'll go live to you at Children's. And good morning to all of our students and educators that are joining us online this morning. My name is Angie Richardson. This is Heather Scruton, Assistant Director in Transport. And Heather is going to tell us in just a moment a little bit more about her department, and we would like to answer questions for you. But before we do that, I wanted to give just a little bit of an overview on Children's Mercy, as most people on this call are joining us from around the state or even other states who may not be familiar with us. Children's Mercy is a standalone independent children's hospital. Um, our largest facility is here in Kansas City, Missouri, and that's where Heather and I are joining you from this morning. But we also have locations in Overland Park, Kansas, Wichita, Topeka, St. Joseph and Joplin, and many more. We have over 8,500 employees throughout our health system. So that makes us one of the largest employers in the Kansas City region. What makes us a little bit different than other hospitals is that we focus 100% on pediatric patients. That's all we do. That's our specialty. In fact, last year we saw uh, patients from 50 different states and over 17 different countries around the world. We've achieved magnet status five consecutive times, which is the highest level of nursing excellence that a hospital can receive. And so essentially that means that we've been recognized for having highly skilled, highly competent nursing staff and care teams to care for our patients. And then finally, like most employers that you will hear from today, uh, we have a lot of different opportunities within healthcare. We're here to showcase transport this morning, but please know that if you are interested in transport or something outside of that area, you can find all those opportunities on our website at childrensmercy.org and clicking the career link. You'll find information about our tuition assistance program there, as well as our internal training programs. So with that, I would like to introduce Heather Scruton Transport. Good morning, thanks for having us. Uh, my name is Heather Scruton. I've been in healthcare for about three decades. I started as an EMT years and years and years ago, uh, went to nursing school and have continued going back to school because Children's Mercy helps me do that. Um, I love working in critical care transport. It's very exciting. Prior to that, I worked in the emergency department. I worked with obstetrics and I worked with psychiatric patients. So one of the my favorite things about healthcare careers is you don't ever get bored. And if you do, there's other areas that you can develop into. It's a really fun field. And I'd love to hear uh, your questions. I will tell you that Children's Mercy is the third busiest specialty transport in the country. Uh, we do about 6,000 transports a year. We have 14 ambulances. We have uh, two airplanes and an S-76 helicopter. We do more miles in transport than anyone else in the country. We're busy. And so we're always looking for people who are interested in doing what we do and learning how to become the best at transport, which we believe we are. So I would welcome any questions, and um, if now's a good time for that, we could take those. Do you thank you so much for kind of explaining a little bit about critical transport and for zooming in today live for Healthcare Career Day? We have a student, uh, Jay Nass, and this is for kind of the nursing side of your your field. Um, how much chemistry is involved in being an everyday nurse? Good question, Jaden. It's a great question. It was my least favorite subject. I will tell you that. Um, so I feel this question. Um, I took chem, I think it was 101 back in the day with a lab um, during, when I got my bachelor's degree. And then there was chemistry involved in the pharmacology courses and some of the other courses. I could have taken a higher level chem course. I chose to take a higher level biology course and that was up to me. And then everyday use, it depends on your field, honestly. If you're doing transport, not often that much. Occasionally with the medications, we have to know how they work and the, and the um, chemical interactions between them. For nurses who are scientists, you're gonna see that more often. So if, it, if chemistry is something you love, you can find it in nursing. If it's not, um, then there are areas that nursing, once you get past that training in college, that you may never see a lot of that again. You know, I'm, I'm not a big chemistry person myself, so 
hats off to you and what you had to learn in college and what you use every day. Um, great question, Jade. We have another question in. Uh, Cross Keys Middle School in Ferguson Florissant School District asks, how difficult is a respiratory therapist job? You kind of described that in the video. If you could go a little bit more depth on how difficult it is. Uh, they're my favorites, I will tell you. I love respiratory therapists. And before COVID, people didn't really know what they did. But they're in the middle of any patient crisis that you have because breathing is like the number one thing we have to keep you doing. And that's what respiratory therapists focus on. Um, is it difficult? I, I It's not um, necessarily an easy job. I think it's extremely rewarding. Like Alan referenced in the video, what you do as a respiratory therapist can often turn someone's condition around quickly. Um, you're helping stabilize and maintain the way they breathe. And if they can breathe, they're calmer, they feel better, we can get them better quickly. The respiratory therapy program can be done in two years. It can be an associate's program. Um, I, I think it's fairly similar as far as nursing prerequisites and RT prerequisites. You're looking at the sciences, um, an algebra and maybe an additional statistics math class chemistry is going to be on there. And then in the training, you really focus on how human beings breathe and what takes place in the lungs and how that's affected by other systems in the body. So whereas nursing is kind of an overview of everything, and then you specialize later with respiratory therapy, you're very focused on respiration. Um, but I will tell you, they're the heroes. When you're looking at a code blue situation, the first person you want in the room is the, is the RT. So I have huge admiration for them. Absolutely, Heather. And you know, um, you know, that was one thing COVID brought out to the forefront is how important that RTs are into the general wealth uh, and health of our society and what they do it day in and day out. We have, a, we have a school right now, Fulton High School is ready to ask a question live. Fulton, are you there? Still climbing on board? Okay, looks like uh, we're still trying to get them on board. Um, one question did come in uh, real quick is, uh, does Children's Mercy offer tours for job shadowing opportunities to high school occupation students or host of students? They do, they have, and I'll let Angie speak to the areas outside of transport. For transport, because we're such a niche area, uh, what you'll need is to be within six months of graduating from whatever medical program you're in, um, whether that's respiratory therapy, RN, EMT, and then um, you can reach out to me and I can arrange a ride along for 12 hours. So you can really see what they do and decide if that's something you're interested in. And then Angie, I'll let you speak to shadowing within the hospital. So we do have some opportunities. It depends on the area that you might be interested in shadowing. Um, those are gonna be reserved primarily for those senior high school students. And then um, certainly if you're enrolled in a college program, you would have opportunity through the clinicals to experience those different areas in the organization. Great question, great question. And, um, you know, one last question, then we have to zoom on out. Um, Corinna asks, what are some cons to working in transport? That's a great question. And there are some. Uh, you don't know what your hours are necessarily going to be. If you get a transport call late into your shift, you go. And that means you're going to get off late. Um, when you're in the air, it's loud. It can be scary. And there are risks to, to medical flights. There just are. Uh, same with ambulance and plane. And it's hard to see sometimes because we're taking care of the very sickest patients. They're the most critically ill. And it's hard sometimes mm. to see sick kids uh, every day. The flip side of that is we make sure to reunite our teams with the kids once they're feeling better so they can exchange toys and high fives and get to know each other when, you know, the kiddo's not so sick. And for my teams, that's really good for the soul. But it's a fantastic, challenging job. It's also a hard job. And I think it's important that, that people understand that. And I think it's really special to be able to say that we do that every day. I agree. And you know, sometimes the hardest jobs are the most rewarding jobs. And so thank you. 
Uh, we're going to have to go ahead and zoom on out to our next healthcare provider. But Angie and Heather, thank you for all you do and the critical uh, transport team there at Children's Mercy. Thank you.